So good afternoon, my name is Alec Vizari. I'm product manager within Fortinet. And uh, today I'm going to talk about beyond the wireless Wi-Fi. So wireless can be also one. And uh, Matt has been explaining that we have some uh, Forti extenders, so there are a few here. Uh, how Fortinet is using Forti extenders and or one gateways? What is it bringing? So we have different ways. As we were explaining, the everything is connected to the Forti gate. Everything, the FortiGate, also we didn't mention that, but it's having a built-in uh, SD1 feature for free. And you can extend that, extend your links that you have by plugging one of those uh, devices and go from the fiber DSL and expand that to the uh, one gateway and um, LTE 5G um, uh, world. So, it's as easy as plugging an AP because everything is relying on the um, Fortilink telemetry that um, Chris was explaining. So it, it can be different ways. It can be connected to the FortiGate and extend what you have. It can be to have a standalone device somewhere and get it to connect to a remote site. So it can be connected via, via IPsec or different ways. It can be also like connected, as we were saying, to our SASE platform. So a single device can connect to multiple um, management platforms. Also, if you have multiple uh, devices, and we are going to cover that, we have the cloud offering that we are going to go a bit uh, deeper uh, in that. So that's the current family of uh, extenders we have. Uh, we have quite a lot, and we are still uh, enriching the, uh, the product family by bringing new models, by bringing more 5G, and so on. Uh, as of now, you can see different um, sections. First is each of them is having at least dual SIM with a single modem, uh, with different LT speed, depending on what are the business needs. Um, also, what we have is for some models, we have dual modems, including dual SIM. So you can shift between the SIMs uh, in function of the data plan, in function of the um, uh, time, and, uh, and also in function of the signal. So if the signal is too poor, you would shift over to the second SIM that comes from, um, from another provider. That would be active-active, right? Dual SIM, dual modem? No, that's not active-active. That's what? Not active-active. So we fail over from one to the other. What you said both radios are up, but they're not being used. Yes. One is for sensing, one is for traffic. Okay, yeah. When the traffic one fails, you yeah, have sorry. a... Yeah, sorry. Okay. Yeah, okay. So that's almost what we have in terms of uh, regular devices. And we have this uh, nice 40 extender vehicular or IoT device that was re recently launched, uh, meaning that it's uh, serving multiple purposes. Going a bit deeper into that, uh, we have two flavors. We have the single modem with dual SIM, and we have the dual, dual, sorry, dual modems with dual SIMs. Uh, this one is capable to have wireless on it. You can enable wireless, meaning that while you serve, um, well, sorry, while you're connected to the 5G, uh, L, sorry, to the LTE network, you can still serve stations in wireless. It's also having some IP rating, having different certifications to comply with uh, OT world. Uh, it's really a really good uh, device uh, to go into kind of fleet mode uh, where you want to put that in trucks, in uh, buses, or even like in OT industry where you want to track things or to have uh, wireless on some, um, on some devices. What we have that is listed here is we have also an external antenna that can be connected to it. It's an extra queue. Uh, but by default, it comes with a decent antenna, and you can plug whatever you want uh, on it. So that'll support GPS frequencies, cellular frequencies, Wi-Fi frequencies, all of them? So we have GPS on it, so uh, it's like feeding GPS already to, uh, to the management platform. Uh, apologies, the antenna, you yes. can plug into the GPS port. For, like if this is in vehicle, yes, right? Yes, you, yeah, 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 so it will yes. support yeah. all so of those. That's what you have here. So for example, you have the antenna oh, gotcha. here, okay. and the GPS is already connected. To in addition it. to cellular, yes. okay. That specific yeah. antenna is a three in one, so it's GPS, LTE, not Wi-Fi. Oh, OK, OK. But we're perfectly fine with the five in one. But OK, perfect, OK. So. The idea is to, to explain you that uh, these or those devices, those fleet vehicles, are really part of your uh, of your infrastructure and really part of the enterprise network. 
Nowadays, we have more and more data to come from those vehicles to go to your data center or to your HQ. Uh, having all the features inside the one gateway, such as HyperSec, dynamic routing, firewalling, and all the, you need in order to go further and to manage all your devices and provide them connectivity. But I said, what if you have a really large fleet of devices? If you are spread across uh, US or across different states? We have, as of now, a 40 extender cloud that is managing all the extenders from the cloud. So each device, which is a switch, an AP, or extender within Fortinet, whenever booting would go through different cycles of discovery. If there is a local device, it would attach to it. If, it, if there is not, it would try to connect to the cloud. If there is no cloud, it will try to SASE, and so on, until one is found to be managed. So the cloud is scaling from like one to thousand devices. We have all the features needed. We get all the details, all of the telemetry, such as GPS location, signal, uh, data, and things like that in order to manage. But for those that were here, yeah, I think we did present uh, our cloud solution two years ago, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, we drive things in order to try to make them less complex, because we know that customers would not like to go from one portal to the other. We did start our cloud uh, offering based on, we had APs, we started an AP cloud. We st had switches, we started uh, a switch cloud, and so on. What we are aiming to get is we are aiming to facilitate things for customers and make them going into a single platform and manage everything from a LAN or one side. So last year, or two years ago, sorry, we did present Fortilan Cloud, uh, our solution to manage both switches and APs from the cloud from different locations. In here, we are heavily working to bring the one gateways into this cloud platform to allow customers not having a FortiGate uh, to have their full solution from one switch and access points. So this is going to come uh, next quarter. We launch a uh, We'll rename the service to 40 Edge Cloud because bringing one to the LAN side is uh, a, a bit weird. Uh, but we are really aiming to ease the wireless and switching uh, world and bring also what are missing for customers to, uh, to manage on day to day. So we'll start with uh, the extender um, uh, portion. And in the second phase, we'll bring our location analytics service, captive portal, in order to give the full flavor to customers willing to be managed or to manage all their devices from the cloud. Are you working with uh, customers uh, to also support connected laptops? Are you seeing any uptick in that? What do you mean by connected laptops? Well, 5G connected laptops. Like as of now, no. As of now, we only have appliances, gateways. Uh, but we, uh, as someone said, is like if there is a need, we can like look into that for sure. But uh, right. based on business requirements. But uh, as of now, the full family is based on appliances that you plug in like a, a 4G rotor or 5G okay. rotor. And so it's if, across Wi-Fi and it's across, it can't, the, the, the gateway can be across multiple mediums. So it can be across Wi-Fi, it can be across LTE or 5G. Does it contain any type of session persistence between the device and the cloud that it's, that it's connected to or a gateway that's connected to so that if you have an application that's open when it switches from one to the other to the other or back and forth mm -hmm. that it maintains that session without dropping it you might have a small drop because like you switch from ip to ip if you see what i mean like if you have two carriers yeah uh, you would anyway change your public ip so on the remote hand you might lose something if you see okay. what i mean I'm, I'm just blatantly comparing you to another vendor that's out there that yes. does something similar because in police patrol city municipalities that was that was one of their key selling points is they maintain session persistence from the device in vehicle so that they don't have when they pull someone over they don't have to re reestablish the connection reconnect to the license plate software so it, it depends what you call because if you consider by example this device where you have an ipsec tunnel yes. you do an ipsec tunnel towards your uh, hq or data center mm -hmm. the source traffic will always be the same the ipsec tunnel whenever um, the session is dropping, would go to the uh, second, uh, you would have like a, a few seconds yeah. of drop, uh, 
uh, but the session will be reestablished on the other side. If but the right. session will drop, though. So I see what you're saying. Yeah, that yeah. is going to be a new connect, new session. Yeah, you yes. can't the session is well, dropping. Yes, because there will be a TCP reset, right? Yes, yeah, okay. you can't have a new connection yeah. because then it has to reauthenticate and yeah. it's like, So, so the VPN tunnel will reestablish with some drop traffic, and depending on the software that you're using, it that that session should yeah. still stay up. But, but the, the IP addressing from the client side inside yeah, of the vehicle, essentially, yeah, well, could be the that, thing. That's my yeah. question: is yeah. that from the from? No, the the, the I, local IP will be the same because we mm. don't change the LAN. It's like a Correct. pure router. Absolutely, but the but when it switches from Wi-Fi to four G or five G or CBRS, whatever it is, there's no mechanism in place that that bonds that device to whatever cloud service is managing it, so that no matter which medium it's connected to, it maintains session persistence. As it as it jumps across, like are you cloning the session in a way where like it's just going over every single IPsec tunnel? So if, yeah. yeah, if the first one drops, yeah, I'm actually yeah. having to do yeah, that. Yeah, but I would say it's more the application layer than uh, on the router layer okay. to do that. Okay, but you can design you know IPsec tunnels to come up and your session would continue, but you're going to have some loss in traffic as you And, and depending on the yeah. type of application and the delays yeah, yeah, you have, yeah. you might also drop the session. Like, it's it, not like... But that's more of a timing than it is... Yeah. That's more of a timing yes. than it is a drop. Well, there are solutions yeah. out there yeah. where, where the session will stay persistent, right, for example, right? Uh, I think you did mention it to some of the vendors, right? So, like, yeah, it, it, it will move... The session will move to the second tunnel, for example, yeah. mm -hmm. that's going over a different circuit, and the software, for example, that Drew mentioned that's connected, they're not going to have to go through a reauthentication process. Now we can. Yeah. What we can do is in the dual radio versions. If you're looking just specifically at that, we can do policy routing. We can essentially do SD WAN, uh, for lack of a better term, I see what you're to change to change the traffic from one primary LTE to another. You can to one carrier to another without saying which one's bad. Yeah. Um, and and you're just constantly looking at the traffic, and you say, okay, well this this has dropped out of our quality, whatever that means, and we're going to transition yeah. the traffic over to this other one. Now, if you're doing that with an IPsec tunnel running on top of that, all of the addressing, everything stays the same. Um, if you're not, then your traffic is still going to get through, but you may have address changes at the other end. So there, there are ways you can get that capabilities out of these products. Um, but you would, in that sense, you would probably need a dual radio to get what you're looking for. Well, yeah, and that, in, in this scenario, it was like one of them, one connection was Wi-Fi and the other one was 4G. I, I mean, you could do that sure they do yeah. they do do that yeah, no I, I mean you could do that with these these radios that's what i'm saying um because we'll afford an extender whether it's sorry i didn't or... nose dive into that one but no, no, it's, cool. <laughs> it's cool because uh, a great yes or no that is a <laughs> that is a technical solution that i think we could bundle together if, if we needed to but all of the parts are there i mean if you can do that i'd love to kind of see it because there's yeah. definitely use cases for it so yeah yeah like when peter mckenzie brought the Axes and he cut the wire. Do you remember that? <laughs> no, you guys I remember that mobility that. field day? Yes. Anyway. Yes. <laughs> Long time ago. It was pretty cool. <laughs> you remember that one? He brought in he brought in axes and he's like, check it so out. This is my first time home. Just saying, man. <laughs> um, yeah, I need Whatever. to go back and find that. <laughs> so so yeah, so to come back to to that, uh, uh, we are bringing both uh, LAN and one world into a single cloud. Uh, it's fully capable to have multi tenancy So we have already big customers, big retails, uh, having uh, one network per site and being able to give access to different uh, subsets of the uh, people or admins to, to the portal, full REST API, uh, and really intuitive to get uh, the TP, so uh, from centrally, you do register your devices, you push them to our ZTP platform, and they would be automatically provisioned to the uh, instance you, you, you have. So just to show, just uh, a, a quick screenshot uh, showing that we are having similar, and that's what Matt uh, was saying is, we aim within Fortinet to unify the user interface and ensure that whenever you go from one product to the other, the interface will be the same and within five to 10 minutes, you will be able to see exactly how the product is and, and, and get used to, to it. So you can see wireless switching and extender being part of the same, um, uh, same uh, product. The last feature of the cloud I wanted to bring is Especially when you have a remote site and you have, like, for example, a one gateway, you have a switch, an AP, or multiple switches and APs. 
you might want to get remote access to the uh, console port of some devices. It could be uh, remote access of the switch or a third party device or whatever. So included in each extender connected to the cloud, we are capable to have up to 16 serial connection uh, and being able to go from the cloud and terminate the serial connection towards the end device. Meaning that you have a really low cost and powerful terminal server that you can use and connect to your devices without having to wonder or to send someone to check the device and connect to the console and see that the switch has to be rebooted or, or things like that. So are those, are those serial connections strictly for terminal use or can you use those as serial interfaces for serial uh, on-vehicle communication? Or? As long as it is like serial communication, like uh, RS-232, like you, you can do that. Can I run a slip connection and do it for a network connection? So, so two things. What, he's, what we're talking about here is, is specifically, it's available on all four day extenders where you can have uh, essentially USB connected serial devices that you can have up to 16 of them, mainly functioning as a terminal server. You, you wouldn't want to do anything more okay. than that. A ter terminal server though, is the primary application. Yes. For that. Yes. But the exception that I'll make is the rugged four day extenders, the four day extender vehicle does have a serial port. It does have an RS-232 that you can't An can actual one that. that. Yeah. Okay. It does have for, for terminal connections. And yeah. But these are, these are virtual or what, what is the, if you've got 16 serial connections, you don't have 16. So you put a USB, USB. Oh, okay. Okay. Copy. Okay. USB app, sorry. 